police emergency. Go ahead, call it. Please, I've just, I've just come back to my flat and the door was locked, so I crawled through the window and my flatmate's covered in blood in the bathroom. Is she breathing? I don't know, I'm trying, I can't look, I'm sorry. Okay, I try, look. try and stay calm. <laughs> What's your call? She's called Alice. Alice! 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 Alice. Oh my God, she's so a frantic call comes in to 999, made by Maxie McGill, who claims she had just arrived home to find her friend covered in blood. The police immediately dispatch to the address where they had made a gruesome discovery. Let's get into the story of Alice Ruggles. She's saying she's coming through that window. I mean, eh? Forensics find Alice's bag. Inside is her phone case, but no phone. Hopefully, if they find the phone, they can find the clues as to who did this. She's lying on her back in the bathroom uh, with a very large hole in her neck. The police discovered the body of Alice on the bathroom floor with a knife wound to her neck. The race was on in finding the person responsible. Alice's friend Maxine said whilst on the phone to 999 that it would be Alice's ex-boyfriend, Truman Harry Dillon, branding him an absolute psychopath. The police managed to track him down. Truman, or Harry as his friends called him, had visible scratches on his face and neck which were all signs of a struggle. He was asked to provide nail scrapings. Okay, and then just looking at you, you've got um, yeah. a bit of... Uh, Two scratches here. Yesterday, Alice Ruggles was found um, at her home address in Gates and she'd been murdered. Mm -hmm. okay, did you murder Alice? No, I did not murder Alice. Oh. Do you have any knowledge of this? No, I don't have any knowledge of this. Were you present when this murder occurred? No, I wasn't. 24-year-old Alice was described as a kind, intelligent, wonderful person. She enjoyed spending time with her family and friends. One of Alice's friends who knew Harry posted a picture of Alice on Facebook to which Harry commented on how beautiful she was and it sparked Alice's interest. I had a friend in uni who was then Alice's friend, that's how I met Alice. Um, I looked at her photograph and I was like, your friend's quite pretty. Like, and then she's like, yeah, she's single and all that. So he stopped me and Alice are speaking well, so I was in Afghanistan. Harry was serving in Afghanistan and the pair started chatting to each other every day on the phone. Harry was originally from India but had moved to Scotland and in January 2016, he returned to the UK from Afghanistan. For the first time, Alice and Harry would finally meet and after spending weeks together, the pair were head over heels for each other. Alice's friends were happy for her at first, but after some time, they would notice changes in her. It started off small at first, but after meeting Harry, she went from being outgoing and happy to distant and secluded. She also lost weight and started to cut people off. It caused many arguments between her and her friends she shared a house with, so she moved from Newcastle to a house in Gateshead, which she shared with her work colleague, Maxine. Harry had started to become controlling and decided who she could and couldn't see. Alice was already getting frustrated by it, but the final straw for her was finding out Harry was chatting and meeting up with another woman he met on Tinder. She no longer wanted to carry on the toxic relationship, so she called it off with Harry and he didn't take it well. He would bombard her with texts and phone calls, begging for her to take him back and send unwanted gifts. If she didn't answer, he would get in touch with her friends and family and also leave her voicemails. I just wanted to give you flowers and chocolates to prove that no, I don't want to kill you. I'm not, I'm not intending to kill you. That's all I wanted to say. Killing you is something that I've never, ever, ever thought about. And I will never, ever even think about that. Alice, please call me back. Please. I just want to speak to you. There's nothing else. I don't even know if you're getting these two voice messages, but please can you call me back? Thank you. Alice started to feel unsafe, so she called the police to ask for advice just 11 weeks before her murder. You mean nothing real, please? Not going to help you. Hi there, um, I just need a bit of advice really, um, more than anything. Um, so I split up with my boyfriend about three months ago. Um, since then, I'm 
I know that he's hacked into my Facebook and also my phone. And um, he's been sending me a lot of messages, even though I've asked him not to contact me. And um, basic, basically, like just messaging my friends and things. Um, well, I had a knock at my door. And, well, he'd, he'd sent me a message saying I've been in the garden since five. I had a knock at my door. Um, and then when I went and looked, I've got like a little, you know, the thing that you can look through. Um, and there was no one there. And then it happened again um, two or three times. And then um, he's come round the back, knocked on my bedroom window at the back of my flat, ground floor flat. Um, and he's been outside and he, he's like left... Um, some flowers and chocolates on the like outside window so I'm like he walked off he's not done anything but I'm just I'm concerned so well, it's, it's, it can be classed as harassment yeah which is a crime yeah if you know any contact from him there's a number of things you can do yeah you could go to a solicitor and take out an injunction yeah keep him away from you yeah. Or report it directly at least now when we can issue them with a pin notice, which means if he ever comes near you again or contacts again, he'll be arrested. She was sitting in the living room, on um, the sofa, and she was doing something on the phone. So I knocked at the window, um, and she was she just her first reply was like, whoa, 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 like she was she was like, what the hell are you doing here? There's, there's not no arrangement whatsoever for you to be there. No. How do you end up in the house? I never entered inside her house. Right. I was always outside. Uh -huh. She's the one who came outside. She said, um, I don't want to speak to you or see you because um, I've heard stories about how guys like you end up killing their girlfriends. Harry didn't stop though. He hacked into her Facebook and changed her password after discovering she had been talking to another man. He was constantly tracking her movements. It's something that I did I shouldn't have done. But because um, I had her Facebook password, so um, I went on her Facebook and changed her password because I, I just didn't want her to go back on Tinder and I was just desperate to not let her go back on Tinder. Feeling like the police didn't do enough, Alice sent a chilling message to her sister which read, the police will respond when he stabs me. The police obtained CCTV. It shows her at work laughing with a colleague who then gave her a lift home from work. A dash cam outside her home captures the car pulling up. They have a brief conversation for a minute or two and then Alice exits the car and enters her home. It would be the last time she was seen alive. Disturbingly, CCTV also finds Harry further up the street in his car at the same time. After she gets in, Harry turns his car around and drives towards her house. 15 minutes later, he is spotted again on camera driving away from the house. The police finally get information about Alice's missing phone. They let Harry know and his whole demeanour changes. So we have been doing some telecoms work. Alright. Yeah, you remember, you saw Alice's phone in her hand when you left. Yep. Yep. You don't want to change your mind, do you? No. Before we show you this? No, it, it was... Pretty much in hand. Yeah. I'm going to show you something that will suggest otherwise. It was, so, can I speak to my um, sister first and then I'll speak to you? Uh, we'll pause the interview. It is 1.34 p.m. We have Alice's phone pinging off a mast because the, the connector masts, all right, that's what the GPRS is about, on the A1 near yeah, the Kenton area. The route you've told us that you have driven after you've left the house. Yeah? What I'm saying to you is you have taken Alice's phone. What have you got to say about that? No comment. So that I may suggest you were lying about the altercation with Alice in the backyard. Is that right? No comment. We know exactly what you did. We've been told exactly what happened to her. Sorry, for two days, she wouldn't know remorse whatsoever. You said you loved her. You didn't love her. You thought if you can't have her, no one else can have her. How can you do that to someone you love? You 
because you're jealous, possessive, controlling, stalker, murderer. Harry is finally charged with the murder of Alice. He stalked and harassed Alice because he didn't want her to move on. If he couldn't have her, nobody could. In his senseless killing, he took an innocent life. A life that touched many people and would have achieved big things. The Alice Ruggle Trust was created after Alice's tragic death, which exists to raise awareness of stalking to ensure that relevant legislation is affected and adhered to. I will put the link down below. Our thoughts are with her family and friends. Rest in peace, Alice. If you enjoy this type of content, please like and subscribe, and as always, take care.